Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today I've got a practice question for you. This is related to the gastrointestinal system. So as we go through the FSBPT's content outline, we are going through each body system on our way on our way through. We've done it many times now. Today is no different. I've got a question for you related to the gastrointestinal system. But before we do that, just a quick reminder, if you are involved in your university in any way, whether it be a class president, you're a class rep, you're a student liaison, whatever it is, we have discounts for cohorts, meaning if you can get five or more of your, your cohort together, you can get some pretty sweet discounts, whether that is on our, our popular crash course we run three weeks before every test day, whether that's on our full VIP class, the VIP class done in small groups, or if you want just all of our premium features, which includes webinars, you get complimentary access to all of our exams, our crash course, all of that, you can find all the information at ptfinalexam.com slash contact if you'd like to get in touch with us and get your cohort through. Uh, so we had multiple 100% first time pass rates for cohort, cohorts. We even had one in January, 2024, which is a huge deal because the pass rates went down so far in January, 2024, just because of the new exam format. Uh, certainly something to be said for uh, trying to do education during COVID. There's just a lot, a lot of multi, a lot of factors. It's very multifactorial. But the point is getting through at 100% pass rate, huge deal. Definitely something we can help you and your cohort with as you prepare for and take the NPTE. So today we've got a practice question. Let's go ahead and jump right into that. Uh, we'll talk about that. A bunch of things to talk about. A short question, but a lot packed into it. And uh, as per our usual, I will read it to you, give you a moment to respond, and then we will talk about it together. Which of the following conditions is most likely to cause constipation? Which of the following conditions is most likely to cause constipation? Number one, Crohn's disease. Number two, laxative abuse. Number three, narcotic use. And number four, ulcerative colitis. So which of the following conditions is most likely to cause constipation? Number one, Crohn's disease. Number two, laxative abuse. Number three, narcotic use. And number four, ulcerative colitis. Well, as you consider constipation, so I, <laughs> no pun intended when we said there was a lot to unpack here, <laughs> but uh, which of the following conditions is most likely to cause constipation? The correct answer is narcotic use. So the use of opioids is one of the classic causes of constipation, especially in PT, where we are often dealing with folks who have just had surgery. They have some type of major episode happen, happen that is quite painful. And so therefore they are often on narcotics. Uh, so the opioids, uh, opioids, narcotic medications, all these are, are clear what they, they're clear causes of constipation. I and mean, I guess that's the bottom line here. These other answer options. So Crohn's disease, uh, laxative abuse. Uh, so laxatives, the primary function of laxatives is to increase bowel motility, increase fluid into the bowel, which obviously is going to help to improve bowel motility and therefore could cause diarrhea. Ulcerative colitis, uh, all these are causes of diarrhea. So again, just to summarize there, we've got Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis. Both of those are autoimmune attacks on the intestinal system. Uh, laxative use, caffeine, incomplete obstructions, diverticulitis, other infectious diseases such as Clostridium difficile. All of these are potential causes of diarrhea rather than constipation. Now, as far as the, the normal causes of constipation, there is a, a, a very long list of items that can cause constipation. I've listed only a few here, which include narcotic medications, anticholinergic drugs. Uh, so this would be uh, cases of like, uh, a classic one is scopalamine. Uh, if you ever you treat someone who gets, uh, well, it, scopalamine patches are often used when a person goes on a cruise or they're going to be otherwise motion sick. Scopalamine is an anticholinergic its job is to slow down the central nervous system by blocking acetylcholine reception. And so with those anticholinergics, what they do is they typically slow everything down, which it would include uh, slowing down saliva production. It would slow down bowel motility. It would relax smooth muscles. So you would not get the peristaltic movement of, of fecal matter. It, basically what happens is that with the anticholinergics, you slow everything down. Same thing with narcotics, that you slow everything down it gums up the works and is likely to cause constipation. Now, also on the list would be nervous system disorders. So like a central nervous system disorder, something causing obviously lack of nervous transmission or hypertonicity is going to reduce bowel motility. There's also cases, certainly cases of this, where you could have, have constipation caused by 
uh, spinal cord injury, multiple sclerosis, uh, mul spinal cord tumors. Parkinsonism fits in this category as well. You just get decreased production of muscular activity, which will lead to constipation. So lots, lots and lots of potentials here. There, there's a bunch of, of um, uh, metabolic conditions that can also result in constipation, which would include hypothyroidism, hypercalcemia, and hyperparathyroidism, just to name a few. Again, there's, there's lots. But uh, maybe one of the, the biggest PT-related ones is inactivity or lack of physical activity and chronic back pain. Those things, uh, those those conditions are very likely to result in constipation. And so I can, oh my goodness, all the stories we could tell from inpatient. So working inpatient, you see this all the time. A patient has just had a major surgery. Let's say they had a knee replacement or, or any number of surgeries, but they have, have surgery, they go under anesthesia, they get pain medication afterward. And what almost invariably happens is that there is now a fight to keep the patient regular and avoid constipation. And so uh, they're obviously less physically active because they just had major surgery. They they have a lot of medica medications on board. All of that could cause constipation. And so, what are kind of the running joke in PT is that the one of the best ways to promote a bowel movement is to do physical therapy because it gets the patient up. And uh, oh my goodness, the number of times I've had patients have that look of distress as soon as they stand up from the the hospital bed, you just say, oh. Yeah, it's, uh, it's time. Like PT is definitely doing its work today. <laughs> and so uh, just uh, there's a lot, a, lot of, a lot of jokes that could be, could be said about that. But we'll just leave it at that. That PT is an excellent, excellent therapy for counteracting constipation. And so again, on the list, we've got narcotics, anticholinergics. Uh, there's a very long list here. Antipsychotics, antidepressants, antihistamines, uh, antacids. That's, that's an interesting one. So like taking Tums that has either calcium or aluminum. What that does is it dries out the gut and it's going to, again, cause constipation. Uh, lack of dietary bulk. So, so diets that are high in sugary starchy material and low in dietary fiber are also going to result in, in constipation. So again, a very, very long list of constipation, which can often present, you can get the epigastric pain, the abdominal pain, you can get the, the low back pain. There, there's a lot, of, a lot of pain that could be associated with this. And so you as a PT, you've got to differential diagnose quite a bit, say, all right, you've got some abdominal pain. Let's talk a little bit more about any of these other, other conditions like are they taking narcotics or do they have uh, anticholinergics on board? Have they had lo chronic low back pain and, and less physical activity? All that could lead to constipation. And then just a note about these other, other items. So Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis. Uh, there's a number of causes of diarrhea as well, but Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis are high on the list. Uh, there's something called irritable bowel syndrome. So again, you see that word syndrome again, meaning that there's not a direct physiological cause like a disease process or, or an illness necessarily causing it. However, it is this aggregation of, of symptoms, which we call irritable bowel syndrome, often has a psychosocial trigger to it. And so this is where you'll get uh, like patients who, if there's some type of, of acute stress in their life, uh, in children, like if they're being bullied at school, school, these types of things could result in diarrhea. So on the list, we've got Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, irritable bowel syndrome, uh, not to mention the the infectious diseases high on the list would be Clostridium difficile or C. diff. Um, and there's lots that could cause any, any enteral in infection could likely result in diarrhea. Uh, caffeine use. So caffeine and laxative use, both of those are strong, strong. They, they act as laxative, obviously laxative use, but uh, caffeine can act as laxative as well. Uh, people who are, are we'll call bodybuilders or, or extreme exercisers are often, maybe not even extreme, but folks who are supplementing their diet with creatine. So creatine is also a, a strong laxative, has a strong laxative effect. So there's just lots of, lots of conditions that can cause diarrhea. And the point is that you as the PT, you've got to hopefully not get too far to the bottom of it, but you've, you've got to at least understand, have a cursory knowledge of what's going on with constipation and diarrhea. So all right. Well, there you go. Like I said, a lot to unpack there with our, uh, our uh, constipation, uh, constipation discussion. Just of note, there's kind of a, uh, I guess we'll call it a paradox that can occur in that if you have a partial bowel blockage, so let's say you have some type of bowel obstruction, 
uh, yeah, some partial bowel blockage, your body tries to adapt that and tries to flush it out in a sense. And you can get an increase in diarrhea as a result of a partial bowel obstruction. And so again, it feels like a paradox in that you have, let's say like you have a patient who has a, a very low fiber diet and they're, they're producing very hard stools, but then it switches and turns into diarrhea and you say, all right, what in the world's going on here? Well, it could simply be because of that incomplete bowel obstruction, which your body's trying to get rid of. And so in order to do so, it increases fluid production so that you can, you can flush everything out and it is either successful or unsuccessful, I suppose. But the point is that it's a paradox where a partial blockage can result in diarrhea. But all right, so with that, what a great discussion to have. I hope you listen to this maybe maybe, <laughs> maybe not anywhere near lunch, and either before lunch nor after lunch. Listen to it now. Uh, just as we come to a conclusion, a big thank you. Thank you for what you do. I know that as you are studying, there's a lot that goes into it. You're putting in a lot of time and effort. A lot of you are in PT school, uh, like currently in your didactic work. You're going through either your first, second, or third year. Or a lot of you would be on clinical. A lot of you are listening to this as you commute to and from school, to and, f- to and from clinical. I just want to say thanks. I know that as you prepare for the exam, it's a big deal. There's a lot of stress and worry and anxiety that goes into it. But let me tell you, totally worth it. Absolutely worth getting through the other side. I still treat patients. I still am an active clinician. Uh, Yeah, I've got my OCS. I got my orthopedic certification specialty uh, a couple of years ago. And yeah, I, I love this. I love treating patients. I love being in the mix of things. I also love being involved with students, being involved with the education. Uh, it's it's fun to learn and apply new things. It, it applies. That's the cool part about my job is that with PT final exam, that I'm able to take the content that I'm creating questions for, entry level content, but I apply it into my, my practice. Like uh, again, admittedly so, I don't have a huge practice in that I'm doing PT final exam full time, but with the patients I do have, it, it makes a really big difference. It's, it's just tons of fun, tons of fun to see and learn material and to be able to apply it then with with patients. And so with that, we'll bring it to a conclusion today. Again, hope you have a fabulous day. Good luck in all of your studies. I know that there's a lot going on in your life right now. So take good care of yourself. Take good care of those around you. Keep a grin on your chin and I will catch you all in the next episode. Thanks everyone. 